Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy. Today I'm here to do my July wrap up. So if you're interested in seeing all the books that I read this month, then go ahead and keep watching. For the month of July, I read 15 books, which I am very, very happy with. And I'm going to look at my cheat sheet here and I'm going to tell you how many of one star, five star, three star, etc. books of each I had. I had two one star books, five two star books, four three star books, three four star books, and one five star book. So let's go ahead and get into the books that I read over Booktube-a-thon. I'm just going to mention these really, really quick because I did make a video and I will link that up here for you guys to check out. I did a wrap up of the Booktube-a-thon separately, excuse me, Booktube-a-thon separately. Let's see if I can talk and I'm just going to run through them real quick and let you know the ratings that I gave them. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the first uh, the number one, The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. I gave it three out of five stars. I read Akatar or A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, and I gave that two out of five stars. And then I read Saga Volume One, which I gave four out of five stars. And I read News of the World by Paulette Giles, four out of five stars. And the last book for Booktubeathon was Let the Tell the Wolves That I'm Home by Carol Rivka Brunt, and I gave this book three out of five stars. Now I organized the rest of the books by category instead of by the order that I read them. I just like to do this better this way, but if you guys prefer something different, let me know in the comments down below. So let's go ahead and get into the first book for the month that I DNF'd. And that book was The Nest by Cynthia Diapri Sweeney. You guys will know that I hauled this book about a month ago. It was one of my first videos that I posted. And this is a family drama story about this group of four grown adult children and siblings and they have or will be coming into possession of this trust fund called The Nest when their youngest sister Melanie turns 40. And they all have had these plans on what they want to do with the money etc etc but when their oldest brother Leo gets into this very precarious situation and there is an accident most of that money is taken to make that problem somewhat go away and deal with the issues that he has been having. And the rest of this book is about them trying to scramble um, to convince their brother Leo that, they, that he needs to pay them back and about how it messes up all of their plans for what they were going to do with the money once they came into ownership of it. And I was really looking forward to this book. I had heard really, really good things and it was a straight up soap opera. For me, that's just not, that's not my thing. I don't do drama. Every time I turn the page, there was something else going on. And I do have to say, there is one theme that is very common in adult literature and just books in general that really irritates me and it doesn't sit well with me. And that is when there are lies in a relationship or a marriage, specifically one where you are romantically involved with the person, where you are a partnership in life with them. It makes me very uncomfortable to think and that I know there are relationships out there where people are lying and it makes me really sad and I just I don't like reading about it there's a lot of that in this book so what I ended up doing is I read half of it solid like solid half but then Aaron looked at me and he said Amy you either quit excuse my language bitching about this book and you just finish it or you go and pick a different one so what I decided to do was go to the very end and read the epilogue and then I kind of skimmed the second half, which I'm glad I didn't read this book all the way through because it ended terribly, really terribly, and I wouldn't recommend it at all. So there's my first one out of five star book. Just, I know it's a pretty book guys, but just skip it on this one. The next one star book I read was bad and I read this book completely through and that is the first book in the Spy Mom compilation this is two books bound together in one the first book called being called original sin by beth mcmullen and this is a book about a spy mom she used to be a spy um she now goes by lucy hamilton although in her spy days she was sally sin and was this crazy good spy that worked for this secret agency and up and one day she decided that she wanted to get married and have babies so that's what she did and of course her past comes back to find her and i didn't expect this book to be realistic it's a book called spy mom i mean come on guys but my problem with this book and the reason i gave this book one out of five stars is because the author couldn't decide how she wanted sally sin slash lucy hamilton to be 
on one page she was like this kick-ass spy chick who was like totally on top of her game and was like really really good at her job and then all of a sudden she's Lucy Hamilton who's this suburb mom who doesn't realize all of these things are happening in her life like it was totally unbelievable it's like she couldn't decide if she wanted Lucy Hamilton to be really good at her job or like a total klutz about it and it was just awful just skip it just don't even bother now on to my two star reads that means okay I, I want to do a disclaimer real quick because I haven't had this discussion on my channel yet about ratings for me a two star rating isn't necessarily bad it just means I didn't love the book I liked the book so I tend to rate very harshly so some of these books like Akatar and other ones these are popular books and it didn't mean that I didn't like them but for me to give a five star rating it means I absolutely loved the book and I just want you guys to know that I guess I probably will do a discussion video in the future just to kind of talk about how I rate my books so you guys kind of know where I'm coming from and can kind of judge on your own and etc cetera, etc cetera. anyway on to my two star books the first one was moon called by Patricia Briggs this is a paranormal urban fantasy type book about werewolves and a girl named Mercy Thompson who is a what they call a skinwalker or a walker for short and that means she can change into a coyote the reason I picked this book up to be entirely honest even though I do like books like this this book takes place in my hometown which is just super cool it's super cool to read a book that takes place where I live which really isn't an exciting place nor a stop for most people anyway so that's fun about this book but it was a fine story it's essentially her story about there's this foul play among the werewolves which she kind of grew up around and so she knows about them and the fae are all out into the world and the public knows about them but they don't really know about mercy or werewolves and whatnot and they're trying to decide if they want to come out in public or not and all the political stuff that goes with it and I would say if you're into urban fantasy sure give it a try it's a super easy read it's not very big the writing's nothing difficult uh, I wasn't floored by it but I enjoyed it and I probably will pick up the rest of the series or continue to go through the series I believe there's like eight books and whatnot but it didn't wow me but I didn't dislike it so two out of five stars on that one the next two out of five stars was so sad that I had to give this book two five two out of five stars because I was so excited about it and that was the Isle of the Lost a Descendants novel by Melissa de la Cruz this is the first book in the series and this is a book about the Disney villains children so the setting of the story is all of the villains after they have done all their villainous things and got caught are sent to this island called the Isle of the Lost that has this huge bubble around it that makes it so that they can't use magic and this follows Mal Maleficent's daughter uh Evie the evil queen's daughter Jay Jafar's daughter and Cru Carlos Cruella de Vil's son and excuse me that was Jay Jafar's son I think I said daughter it was a son so two daughters and two sons and this book was just very high school what I thought this book was going to be more about was an adventure because they come to find out that there is this magical scepter uh that belonged to Maleficent and Maleficent sends Mal on this quest to go find it because of course they don't want to be on the Isle of the Lost and they want to be in charge of the you know the once upon a time kingdom or whatever it's called I believe it's called Aradon in this and I thought that was what it was going to be about but that's a very short part of this book at least that was how I felt about it most of it is about them being in high school and the drama that goes with it and I just thought it was dull it was really boring and the reason I didn't give it one out of five stars but I did give it two out of five stars was because I liked what they did with I liked learning about what the villains themselves were doing in this society like Jafar owned a junk shop and the voodoo man from the princess and the frog own, or ran was a principal at the high school so that was fun but I just felt like this book could have been so much more and it just fell short for me and I would say pass on this one guys this next book that I have I already did a book review on so I will link that up here for you guys and that is Vicious by V.E. Schwab this book really disappointed me this is the book about Eli and I already forget his name Victor who are two pre-med students who are studying near or extra 
ordinary people or EOs and they kind of figure out how these people get these seemingly superhero powers and decide to try to create a scenario where they can get them as well and they are successful but the first timeline is about when they're in college and kind of discovering these things and the second timeline is 10 years later where they're actually enemies and this book is so hyped and people really loved it and I gave it two out of five stars it just fell short for me I'll like I said I have a book review if you want to hear more of my thoughts on it and the last two star read I have is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll this is a bind up that includes Through the Looking Glass which I have not read yet I for one did not realize this book was so short I thought it was like a, like a book. It's like a very short little book that takes no time to read at all. I'm not going to go into the plot of this because most of you know what it is. I found the story really bizarre. I knew it was supposed to be bizarre, but I think I, I'm glad I read it because now when I do the, do read retellings about it, I know the original text, but guys, it's weird. And Alice is, I don't like Alice. She's kind of a whiny little girl and I didn't enjoy her character. Everyone else was kind of interesting, but Meh. It was okay. Now onto my three star reads and the only three star read that I had from the bunch that wasn't from Booktubeathon was Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the second one, The Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan. I loved it. It was fun. I'm not going to go into what this one is about because we don't want any spoilers here, no do we? And it's fun. I'm going to continue reading it. Yeah, I did. I gave both the first one and the second one both three stars because I think, like I said, they're fun. Have I said that enough times? They're fun books, guys. They're fun. But I did like the first one better. That being said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this one. And I finally got around to reading Lumine, which actually don't mind me that's another three star read. I'm losing my mind, guys, but I don't have a copy of it because I lent it to a friend and there it is, although most of you know what it looks like, by, okay, let's see if I can remember, Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, I believe. But this is a super fun book about a couple that recently broke up. They're in high school. It's about Katie and, oh my gosh, I can't remember his name. Sorry, guys. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And their planet is invaded and so they end up on these ships running away from the bad guys and it's told through multimedia, emails, dossiers, classified forms, IM conversations, etc, etc. Go into this book blind, guys. Seriously, don't read the synopsis on it. Just know that it's a fun read. It did disappoint me a little bit because people hyped it up so, so much, and there were parts of it that I didn't love, but it was a fun read, and I enjoyed reading it, and it is a quick read, even though it is almost exactly 600 pages. But three out of five, so not bad. Definitely enjoy it, and would definitely recommend now it. Now on to my one four-star read that I hadn't already mentioned in my booktubeathon wrap-up, and that is Homegoing by Ya Jesse. I hauled this book a while ago as well, and this is a very, very hyped-up book on booktube. This is the story that starts with two stepsisters in Ghana in the 1700s and it follows their lineage. One sister is married off to a white slave trader and the other is sold into slavery. So one, the majority of one lineage, it takes place in Ghana while the other one is in America. And this book was very incredible. It was really good. There's a reason people are talking about this book. Her writing is incredible. She gets you she allows you to get to know these characters in such a short amount of time that is just amazing to me. I did think the first half of the book was stronger than the second half though. I just found the characters more real and raw and very, very vivid in my brain. Whereas for whatever reason, the closer we got to present day in the final chapters, they seemed to get a little bit more wishy-washy for me, which I was disappointed about. And not that this is important, but for those of you who have read this book, H was definitely my favorite character. I loved his story. I thought it was fascinating, but I absolutely recommend this book, you guys. This is one of the first books that I've really read that focuses on African-American individuals and Africans and being a black person and what that means and what that meant at different times throughout our world and throughout our history. And it really, really is an incredible book you really, really should read it. I, I, this, is, this is a book I think a lot of people should read because we would all learn a lot from reading this book. And for my 
five star book this month, which I was so nervous to read and you'll understand when you see it. And that is My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Bachman. Guys, I was so, so, so nervous to read this book because as you probably know, if you've watched any of my videos, I read A Man Called Uva last month and loved it. Like one of my favorite books of all time. I did a book review on it. I will link it up here for you guys. And I was nervous to read this book because I loved A Man Called Uva so much that I didn't want to be disappointed by this one. And my guys, my guys, my guys, he didn't disappoint. It's absolutely amazing. I actually think I like this one better than A Man Called Uva, although both are absolutely incredible and you should absolutely read both. This is a story about a little girl named Elsa who is seven almost eight and she loses her grandmother and her grandmother was her best friend. She doesn't get along with other kids at school. She has problems at school and her grandmother made this imaginary world for her, the land of almost awake and there are five different cities in it, Mia Moss being Elsa's favorite and this book is told from Elsa's point of view and I've never read a book meant for adults with a child as the narrator and I loved it. The whimsy of this book was just, it was so cozy and wonderful and happy, but at the same time, there were so many moments in this book that were so raw and confronting grief and your identity and learning things about your family members that you didn't know before or recognizing that they lived lives outside of you and the interconnectedness of everyone. This book is phenomenal. As you can see, there's like a million tabs because, oh guys, I love it. Frederick Bachman is amazing. Definitely my most favorite, my most favorite. Did I say that right? My most favorite author currently with Betty Smith being kind of of the past, I guess you could say. But his writing style is beautiful, you guys. The way he tells a story is amazing. I didn't laugh out loud as much in this one as I did in A Man Called Uva, but that didn't at all take away from the fact that it was fun and it was funny, but a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. If you have not fre read Frederick Bachman, just go read him, guys. You will not be disappointed. There you have it, guys. There are the 15 books that I read in July. I would say July went by fast, but it really didn't. This month like dragged on for me. When I saw that Vicious was read in July, I was like, no way, that was like months ago. But it wasn't. Hopefully I can keep up the trend of about 12 to 15 books a month. I don't know if it's gonna happen though, just because school does start to pick up next month. I will be headed back to work, et cetera, et cetera. But like I said, we'll definitely give it a shot and hopefully it'll cool off here soon so I can get all cozy and read with socks and a cup of tea. Can you tell I really want fall? Anyways, I'm rambling. But if you like this video, guys, please like it. And if you loved it, please subscribe and we will see you in my next video. Happy reading. books this month with munch. I've read 15 books this munch munch munch. I read 15 books this month. I can't say that. I read 15 books of this I can't speak this month. The list. I read 15 books this month. <laughs> I read 15 books this month. <laughs> Uh, I read 15 books this month with a... <laughs> this is embarrassing. I read 15 books this month with a... <laughs> I read 15 books this month. <laughs> You have to stop.